All right, what's up everyone? Uh, I just made it into town and uh, Casey's been working super hard on the uh, prospect build. Like I said, Casey's been just jamming away at this thing. So we're gonna take a look at the car and see what kind of progress we've got done so far before we all just start tackling into it and building this thing super quick. What's up guys? So yeah, like I said, this is my prospect 14. Um, actually, I got the car for free um, and we just, Kind of got into town and I started stripping it down, cut a bunch up, caged it and all kinds of stuff. So, I mean, we can kind of go through it if you want. And... Yeah, let's just start off the front. Does cool. that sound good? Yeah. All right, let's start off the front. Okay, um, so yeah, obviously first things, front end of the car is chopped off. Um, we're just, we're not gonna use any of it. So I saved it, we can sell it, make carbon parts, whatever we decide to do with it. Um, I'm actually gonna chop this a little bit more, but I had it on the rotisserie. So that's kind of why this is here, rotisserie's back there. Um, uh, next thing you'll notice, the chassis is stitch welded. So I mean, I mean everywhere in the little pockets, undersides, ev everywhere is stitched, um, just to kind of give it some rigidity. And it's a, you know, it's a almost 30 year old car. So um, do every bit we can for it. Yeah. So this is a, a really neat piece by PBM. It's completely adjustable. There's actually, I believe, four rows of screw holes that you can kind of see in there. So you have forwards, backwards adjustability. There's also different spacers you can stack in here to lift this to make sure that you're getting the proper bump correction and uh, that it's in line with like your lower control arm. Uh, that's really nice. It also, because it is in clamps, it gives you the ability to tip if you need to. So you can kind of set that angle um, how you need it. If you, you just need to clear something just a little bit, you can kind of roll the rack a tiny bit. Um, but super, super nice. It's got a really thick middle plate, so it's not gonna flex a bunch while we're driving the car, which is definitely important. And if you do get in an impact, you're more likely to snap these clamps than you are to damage the rack or the subframe. That simple feature means that, you know, hopefully we're, we're just changing clamps. We're not changing a subframe, we're not changing a rack. And that can be the difference between winning and losing in the weekend. Sure, this, this whole weld-in kit is just part of their Yep, they just, they just package. sell it as a, you, you can have them fabricate it, or I think they may send it out to Matt at Drift Cave. Um, so you can have them fabricate it. Uh, but I, I think I have maybe like three hours in the whole thing, you know, so not not horrible amount of time to to fabricate uh, We started cutting holes in the firewall. That's where my bulkheads are all gonna go for coolant lines um, Wiring harness all that good stuff um, So like I said the stitch welding is done underneath all the way back um, the wheel wells are all cleaned out, hammered. This is normally like a lip that you could cut the tire on, so that's hammered. Same with this. Um, this as well, we get excessive angle. You'll get into here and this out here gets caught. So we go ahead, hammer it up, stitch it, uh, try to make it integral while modifying it. So um, then inside here, um, I gutted the doors and then cleaned them up. Normally you like cut yourself up pretty bad if you did this on somebody's cut edges, but uh, clean them all up so I don't have to worry about cutting myself all season long or whoever's riding with me. This is a Cage Kits cage. Uh, it was really nice. It comes notched and laser etched and serial numbered. You can kind of see on the bars, there's serial numbers everywhere um, that just let you know where they go. We kind of give you gives you a master list. Uh, really nice cage, fit amazingly. I actually like, you can look across here. I stitched it in like six different spots. Fits super, super tight, nice to the pillars. Um, there's just not a lot of um, space left over. They did a really, really good job on the fitment on this thing. So FD legal, touches the car in eight points from the anti-intrusions to the A pillars, uh, B pillar and C pillar. Uh, so nice and tied in. We shouldn't have any problems. Came with the dash bar. It actually comes with an X for the back bars and I just opted not to use them. Uh, it makes getting into the back of the car for anything we mount back there way, way, way easier. So. I just opted out on on using them. Stock pedal, stock steering column, that's a prospect thing. So those have to stay. I had to buy a new clutch pedal, which cost about as much as a pedal box. So that was really neat. Is that uh, from uh, Nissan directly? Yeah, it's an OEM, OEM Nissan part. So I just bought it brand new from them. So uh, that was, like I said, you probably could, you could put in, you could buy the pedal box. You may not get the master cylinder stuff, but you could definitely buy the pedal box for how much that clutch pedal costs. Right, right. Um, I have not stitched over the tunnel and everything because that's all going to get chopped out 
when we put the GSR and mock the motor up, which will be happening soon. I think my engine mounts are supposed to be here today. Okay. So um, we've got the bell on the trans and everything over there already. We've got a couple of spare blocks. So we'll have something to mock up in here. Firewall started cutting. Uh, floor's cut, my firewall slides in and that'll get restitched and it runs up. It's actually a like flange, a flange style piece. Um, so. This corner, so this this flange basically fits up in here like that, and that will just get welded in. And then I'll rev, uh, rib nut, uh, nut cert, whatever you want to call it, and do aluminum plate across, so it'll end up like bands. Um, but that's kind of the the thought process. I've got metal flange for the whole thing. Cut out for the fuel cell already. Uh, which has been fun trying to figure out. Uh, we thought we ordered a fuel cell four months ago. It's just not responding to calls and stuff, so that's neat. Um, so I've got something else going on. Hopefully I'll have my cell in time. Luckily we can use Dan's when his car comes down after this weekend when we get the new motor, so we can use his for mock-up. I'm having it built the exact same. Um, so that's cut for that. The tube rear is started. I cut the frame rails, cleaned everything up into here. Um, and then plated with nice thick plates and laid a, laid a level across this and basically measured from this, this flange right here forward. Put my level across, across, got all my marks, cut it, and then basically tacked up the plate, put my level back on it, made sure it laid flush everywhere and made small little tweaks before I uh, stitched it or uh, tacked it completely. That's that. Uh, wheel wells are all done. Capped completely so pretty pretty stoked on how those came out uh what else uh my water pump mount is done you can see that guy there with the studs and up front my fuel pressure regulator was mounted in the engine bay well sorry for uh not videoing the first parts of the build however we are going to do a really good job about making sure that we do so thanks for watching uh, we'll update you with part two here soon don't forget to like, subscribe, ring the bell. We'll see you soon.